Hello and welcome to this podcast from Elvis the Ultimate Fan Channel. Cynthia Pepper is an American actress from Hollywood, California. After graduating from Hollywood High School, she took night classes at the Los Angeles City College. In 1960, Cynthia was cast as teenager Jean Pearson in the TV show My Three Sons. The next year, she starred in her own 26-week series, Margie, in the role of teenager Margie Clayton. The show was broadcast on the ABC network from October 1961 to April 1962. The following year, Cynthia landed the role of PFC Midge Riley in the 1964 Elvis Presley movie, Kissing Cousins. I'm delighted to say Cynthia joins me on the show to talk about her life, career and working with Elvis. Hi Cynthia, and welcome to the show. Hi Steve, nice talking with you. Uh, I'd just uh, like to say uh, uh, I'm very grateful that you joined me today to share your Elvis memories. It's, it's very kind of you. Well, thank you for asking. No Thank problem, you. no problem. Uh, can you, can we start then with uh, maybe the the very very beginning? Uh, you were born and and you know your your, your upbringing and so forth. Uh, uh, if you'd like to share that with the listeners. Sure, I was born in Hollywood, California. Uh, my my mom and dad were in show business. My dad was in vaudeville, and his good friends were Bing Crosby, Bob Hope, and and of the like. And uh, at uh, my dad's first wife was Ginger Rogers. You know, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. Oh which, yes. At, at, which has nothing to do with me. I just think it's kind of cool. And uh, but he he married again, and then he married my mom, who was a dancer also. My dad was a singer, and so it became natural for me to get into the business. I've never done anything else. Never made a living at anything else but show business. So I grew up in um, lived in New York, Dallas, Texas, then back to Hollywood, and went to Hollywood High, uh, and um, with some other people who became actors, and uh, the likes of. Um, Stephanie Powers and Yvette Mimeo and um, the girl who was on uh, Dynasty, uh, Linda Linda oh. Linda Evans. So Linda Evans and Stephanie were friends of mine, but they were two years younger. So now when they when they make do interviews and stuff, or when they have, and they say their age, and if they're lying, I know they're lying. <laughs> <laughs> Women have a tendency to go under, you know, right? Make themselves younger. And Mike Farrell, who was in Mash, he went. He was a year older than me. And uh, uh, you know, uh, Rick Nelson and David Nelson. Rick Nelson, um, the singer was a year older than, than us, yeah. than me. Uh, so we had a, really uh, had a good time. S- some people actually know him as Ricky Nelson, don't they? Yeah, Ricky. I'm sorry, Ricky yeah. Nelson. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Ricky Nelson, yeah, and, and his brother David was a little older. So I, that's where I grew up, and then I started doing some small things. And my dad, you know, knew some people in the business, so that helped me to get started, to get an agent. And um, uh, I guess the rest is history. I, the first thing I ever did was that was meaningful to me was my three sons yes you get my three sons in dublin in in, in uh, I, ireland I, I i have to be very i have to be very very honest no. with you and confess that i've never seen it i'm sorry <laughs> okay okay well it's it's a very it was very very famous here a family show and i played uh, the girl next door with her family and so that was my first you know it was a series on television on uh, abc one of the major networks here and then uh and then I did uh, some other shows, The Flying Nun. You've heard The Flying Nun with Sally Field, uh-huh. Perry Mason, Wagon Train. Oh, yes, Pat, yes. Uh, I remember Wagon Train when I was growing up. Yes. <laughs> yes. L- Lassie and Adam's Family. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the kind of shows uh, in the movie with Jimmy Stewart and Sandra D. I played her roommate. So I started doing that, and I was just, um, it's all I ever knew. I never, you know, did anything else. And uh, and then, of course, then Elvis came along, right? <laughs> Well, let, let, let's let, let's not move to Elvis yet because you've missed you've missed okay, out. You, 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 you've actually missed out Margie, haven't you? Oh my gosh, Margie, Margie! I left my three sons, which is uh, with Fred McMurray. Do you know Fred McMurray? Yes, yes. The actor. Yeah. Well, he was he he was the lead. He was the father. So uh, of my three sons. So I auditioned for Margie, and there were two hundred ladies of it. I understand. I was twenty years old, playing a high school girl, as I was in my three sons played a high school girl and my three sons. And Margie was based on a movie with Jean Crane, who was in the 20s, 1920s. So that's when it was placed. So, and I always loved the 1920s. I wasn't born then, but I always liked that. I always thought maybe I was, you know, in another life. But Mm -hmm. I, so I auditioned and I got Margie. And uh, I did that for a whole year on ABC. And uh, strange enough, we followed my three sons on the schedule. Uh, when it was on, we were we were on for a year, 
And uh, I loved it because I loved the music. I loved the Roaring Twenties and the outfits. And uh, have you heard of American Bandstand? Oh, yes, definitely. I have, yeah. Okay, I was on American Bandstand uh, because I made a record. Uh, I think anybody who could um, carry a tune made a record. I made a record with the 20th Century Fox Orchestra, which you can hear on what I gather on YouTube. You know, I'm not very proficient with technology, but I know you can hear it on uh, the record I made on uh, YouTube, the, the original records. And I did a couple of fairs, and I did American Bandstand, and I sang on that with, you know, Dick Clark was hosting. That was, and I used to, in high school, I used to, growing up in the 50s, I used to, you know, listen to, watch American Bandstand and dance to the music, you know, like we'd come home from school and start dancing. That's what we did as teenagers then, so to be on the show was, you know, a blessing. Really enjoyed that. Yeah, now I'm sure a lot and, of my a lot of my listeners now are, are saying, ah, yes, I, I, and you know, they're sort of saying, <laughs> I, and they're, they're placing you now after you're mentioning all these shows. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I mean Mar- it, Margie was very, very successful. It, it ran for 26 weeks, didn't it, between October 61 and 20, April 1962? Yeah. Yeah, and nowadays, that'd be a hit. But oh, we yeah. were opposite uh, a show called Hazel with Shirley Booth, and we had Procter & Gamble, which is a big product... Here. I, I don't know what you have. And uh, they decided to go with Hazel. But we were on, I think we did, like you said, 26 shows. And, and I mean, I was Margie. So it was just, we'd do, you know, go first class. We went here, we went there. It was wonderful. And I was in hog heaven. I used to tell people I would pay to be Margie, but I didn't tell the producers that. Or the, <laughs> <laughs> or the studio. I was under, con- no, I didn't, want to, I didn't want to say that. But I was under contract at 20th Century Fox. So um, I, I did, you know, that started doing some shows, just different things like that, uh, Lassie. And when I did uh, Take Her, She's Mine, I've always been a blonde. And I had to go brunette because, of course, Sandra D was blonde, and Jenny Maxwell, who worked with Elvis, also was a blonde. And so they, when you're under contract, you do what they say to a certain degree. And so mm-hmm. I went brunette, and uh, I, I enjoyed that, working with Jimmy Stewart and Audrey Meadows. Um, and, and then, of course, um, Elvis came along. How did you find out right. about uh, your part in, in Kissing Cousins? Well, after I'd done, you know, quite a few things, I um, I remember very distinctly. I came home from from uh, from grocery store, and when in those days you you called a, a, a message service, and they said call your agent. So I called my agent, and uh, this is in '62, and they said. Uh, are you sitting down? And I said, well, I will sit down. He's, he said, well, I want to tell you that Elvis Presley saw you, Elvis Presley saw you on something and thought you might be right for this part that they're starting to shoot in, on Monday. And uh, I, I was flabbergasted. And I said, oh, my gosh. He said, what you have to do, we lived in West Hollywood at the time, what you have to do is go to MGM Studios, go to wardrobe department, and if you can fit into the uniform, which is the, the costume, then you're co-starring with Elvis on Monday. <laughs> oh, that's how I did it. I w- raced to MGM Studios, went to the wardrobe department, and uh, the rest is history as far as I'm concerned. And I started, uh, I met him on Monday. And uh, I, growing up in the 50s, like I said, in the 50s, the first song I heard him do was Heartbreak Hotel. Yeah. I think I was 16, 15, 16, and I went, <gasps> oh, you know, Dreamboat. You know, I was a <laughs> typical teenager. And then to actually work with him. And uh, and when he sang to me, I, I joke about it, when he sang to me Tender Feelings in the film, I always said, oh, here's Elvis Presley singing to me, and I'm getting paid for it, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, that's a thing that you're a hero, not hero, but you're, wow, you know, this guy is singing to you. What a wonderful, wonderful blessing that was. I, I've watched that scene uh, a few times, and it, it doesn't look like <laughs> you're. it's hard for you to stare into his eyes when he's singing to I you. I know, with it. <laughs> I know, but I always say to people that you now that I'm old, much older, I say I can always do all it better. You know, I can act it better. But they they had me, you know, look goofy, kind of like what is this crazy guy doing? You know, kind of chasing, not chasing me around the jeep, but the choreography was you know in and out of the jeep, and <laughs> I'm staring at him. And then we went up at Big Bear, and uh, for I think it was for a week, and uh, in between, you know, we talked a lot you know, in between the scenes and everything, got to know each other. And he was said to me one thing that I tell your listeners that I think they might find interesting. As we were just talking and we were waiting for the a, a plane to go over because we were outside. And uh, it was just before his, he was to sing to me. He said, you know, Cynthia, I don't, 
I don't know what I'm doing here. And I said, what do you mean, Elvis? He said, well, I don't know what I'm doing here making all these films. He said, I think I should be back driving a truck. Wow. And I thought, wow. That's, yeah, it gives me chills to this day. That, and I, what do you say to that? I said, oh, I didn't know what to say, actually. And I'm thinking, the, the, I don't want to say the truck driver never left him, but his, his home never left him. Mm. You know, he was, he was still that country boy. And I thought, wow, that is just something else. But, um, yeah, but when he was singing to me, I'm thinking, I can't believe Elvis Presley is singing to me. And then I had to, you know, I had to back up, and I thought, well, that's a good bit of acting to back up when I really wanted to go forward. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. And then uh, driving that Jeep, if, you, if your audience has seen the film, driving the Jeep, and then I had to drive the Jeep. I used to drive a stick shift, so I knew how to do that, but I thought, oh, my God, I don't want to run over Elvis Presley. I'd never live that down. So... Uh, we did that scene, and then when, just before he sang to me, and I had this real goofy look on my face, and but that's what they wanted. So um, yeah, I was very. I, 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 it's, it's quite funny because just before he sings "Tender Feeling" to him, you've thrown him on his back, haven't you? <laughs> uh, I think, yeah, I, I, th- I think you've, you've sort of thro- thrown him I over. Thrown him on bed and I went, "Oh no!" And what happened? Yeah, and then uh, he gets up and starts singing to me. I'm like, "What is this?" And he, we kind of choreographed going, you know, in and out of, out of the jeep. Till he has to be cornered, and then, uh, yeah, that was very nice. And then he chases me, and then uh, I trip him. Yes, that's and, right. And uh, yeah. we, yeah, we had a. He was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful man, and so professional, and gorgeous. You yeah, know? I, I, was I, just, I was just, I was just about to ask you actually. <laughs> you, 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 you've seen him up up close. Um, oh yes. I mean, uh, you've you've looked into those eyes from a I'm, few inches away. Oh, he was gorgeous, and he's. I would always say he's better than some of the co-stars, better looking. He was, but he didn't, you know, I would tell people, Steve, that he, he didn't act like he was, you know, Mr. Star, mm. at least when I knew him, and I don't think he ever did. Uh, he knew who he was, but then he had that uh, humility and his um, insecurity, which was, you wouldn't think so, but he really did. He was quite insecure. You might have heard that from other people if you've Talk to other people who yes. knew him. Yeah, they, they, him. Uh, I spoke to uh, uh-huh. a, a girlfriend, uh, Barbara Hearn, that dated him in the 19, uh-huh. 1956, and she said sort of uh-huh. the same sort of thing as well. And his mum and dad as well were very humble as well. Right, and I mean, but you, I mean, he wasn't a fool. You knew he couldn't get away with a lot of things, but he he did have that uh, homespun, you know. And he had such a big heart. So I always say, well, you know, there are a lot of pretty people in this world, but if there's nothing behind it. It's just a shell, mm. you know. The, it's not interesting. It's not. It's not good. But he had. He had it all. He wasn't perfect, of course. But he had the looks. He had the heart. And um, he was just a, a wonderful human being. Um, I was. I'm. My husband says, you know, you're part of history. And I. Yeah, I guess I am. As far as, you know, entertainment goes, to to have know him and to have worked with him, it was. Uh, it was. And that, when I did Margie, I had to audition. I think for about two months. There are 200 girls that wanted it. And this was just came into my lap, basically. It was meant to be, hmm. you know, when the agent said, get over there and, and put the uniform on. So You were lucky it fitted you. I have a uniform. <laughs> Pardon? You were lucky it fitted it you. Fit me. Yeah, it did. It, not so much on the top. <laughs> I must <laughs> say, but we don't talk about that. <laughs> uh, I have some, some very nice people in Florida, a, a fan club, uh, group uh, ma- had a uniform made for me that like it's a copy of it so I have that and of course it's not it's a different size but it fits you know and and the hat and uh, I sometimes when I travel hopefully we'll get back to traveling and you know festivals and conventions and so forth mm-hmm. I once in a while will wear it as a mm-hmm. surprise and then the guy you know the ATE would sing to me tender feelings or kissing cousins and I have that uniform on it really brings the house down. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Sounds yeah. like a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And someone says, is that the original? And I said, honey, I couldn't get my left thigh in the original. I mean, I'm not <laughs> big, but I still couldn't. I was really tiny. Um, but uh, yeah, he was a, such a pleasure to work with, too. But um, he, I mean, he had... I, I, know, I know a lot of the ladies now want me to ask you this. Is you, yes, you, it you, was nice. you, you obviously <laughs> You obviously kissed Elvis. Yes, I was waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 yes, it was... It was everything that that a woman and uh, could hope for and more. Um, I, and when if, when he chases me and I and I trip and and that's when we kiss on the ground and um, 
Gene Nelson directed, who I always thought was always kind of cute. He always directed. He was always in the Doris Day films, and he was, here. I got to these two guys, you know, surrounded by. And anyway, so I tell people that I like the kissing scene so much, I kept messing it up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, can you put that light? At, you know, and Elvis would say, "Let's mess it up some more." So I would keep doing it <laughs> instead of just a one take, right? <laughs> and women would appreciate that and say, "Hey, I do the same thing." <laughs> yeah, very, very clever. And he smelled like he smelled like brute. Yes, cologne. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that uh, was the the uh, cologne of the day. Yeah, um, I was going to say, did he ever? Uh, uh, your love interest was uh, the blonde Elvis, uh, the Jody Tatum, and Yvonne right, Yvonne, right. Yvonne Craig was the uh, the the, the dark haired. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, did Jody, he ever? Yeah. Did he ever say anything to you about uh, not liking uh, wearing the blonde wig? Oh. Well, he didn't. Uh, he wouldn't come out for a while. In his, in his, from his dressing room with the wig on. He, of course, he didn't want to dye it. Of course, he dyed, his hair was brown, mm. naturally, yeah. as we all know. And then he dyed it black because he, I, what I heard, the Tony Curtis, he liked that look, that dark hair look, you know, the actor. And uh, so, but he had a devil of a time, they had a devil of a time getting him out. Come on, Elvis, come on, come on. He didn't like it at all. But, but once he got into it, you know, he's a pro, he was a pro. Mm. You do it, you know, mm. and... Uh, uh, he, he looks better with the dark, but uh, listen, I'll take Elvis anyway. And <laughs> yeah. I think most women would say, any woman would say that. Yes, yes. You actually uh, developed a, a quite a, a good friendship with uh, Yvonne Craig, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yeah, she was a pal. We went to, uh, after we did, um, actually, she was, Mar she was in Margie. She had like a couple of lines in Margie. And I didn't know her, you know, then. We did, but I didn't work with her in, in Kissing Cousins. We weren't on the same set, but we did... Um, a pilot called Three Coins in the Fountain, which was based in Rome. We was gonna, it was from a movie, and we, were, we went to Rome for six weeks, and we got to become really, really good pals. And uh, we stayed about two weeks after we stopped shooting in Rome, and we, uh, we went around, uh, and my son was only two months old at the time. We went traveling to Australia, I mean Austria, Germany, Florence, Venice, that kind of thing, and England, on our own, and we had more fun, and uh, she was a good friend of mine, and I really miss her. I didn't see her that often, because I'm in Las Vegas, mm. and she was in L.A., but when I would go to L.A., we'd have lunch, and we'd keep in, you know, in touch with each other, uh, you know, every now and then, maybe every four months or so, and I really miss her. She was a wonderful, wonderful lady, and so much fun, and all the guys loved her. I mean, she was a sexy one, and uh, <laughs> moved to Paris, and... We went to Paris, and we and they all were looking at her, and I'm thinking, well, that's okay. <laughs> she was, but she was wonderful. She's she's true, and yes. I, I'm close to a couple of other friends, but um, mostly my friends are out of the business, you know, that I grew up with, mm -hmm. my close, close, close friends. But yeah, I miss I miss her a lot. Yes, We've she, lost quite a few people in the last couple of years, yes, as you yes, know. Yes, unfortunately, yeah, it's getting that way, isn't it? Uh, yes, very it sad, is. Very I, sad. Very sad, and um, I personally have left a few friends that I went to school with, but other friends, you know, show business friends. Um, and I'm thinking, you know, when we do start up having convent festivals and conventions, and I think it's important that people meet people who knew Elvis, and there's not many of us left, to get us while you can, because we're not always going to be there. Mm. Who is, you know? Mm. But the point is, is that you want to talk to someone who actually knew him and get their perspective on him, I think. Because we all... We all knew him in a different way, but the but the one main thing was how what a good person he was. Yes. You know, a man would know him differently than a woman, and so forth. Yeah, I, I think I agree. I agree. It it, it it is it is important to share. Uh, if anybody you know worked with Elvis or knew Elvis, it's it's important because the fans, you know, the fans were always very very important to Elvis. Oh, oh, absolutely. He loved his fans, and yes. I always say the fans, the Elvis fans, are the best. I have a friend who did Star Trek, and he, she does, or did, you know, we're not doing that now, as you know, the world isn't, but it'll come back, I'm, I'm sure of it. Uh, she would do the conventions, and, you know, they're kind of crazy and fun and crazy, but Elvis fans are the best. Hmm. They're always loyal, and uh, I always call them my kissing cousins when I see them. <laughs> <laughs> I get a plug in, and yet I say, you know, I love you guys, you're like kissing cousins, yeah. and it's true. Now, you, you mentioned earlier that the uh, film was uh, on location in Big Bear, and then, uh -huh. uh, and, and then afterwards you moved to the studio for interiors. Is that correct? 
Right. Two weeks. But mm-hmm. d- d- did did you hear the incident uh, about Elvis driving down the mountain after you finished the location shooting and the brakes failing on the mobile home? Did he talk about that? No, I never heard about that. Yeah, yeah, it was it, it was quite a, quite a, quite a frightening experience, I, about, I think, for him. Yeah, I heard about it now. You know, in the last years. Yeah. But not at the time. Mm. Isn't that strange? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and uh, it was supposed to be the big Smoky Mountains. Um. And it can be treacherous, you know. They're mountains, so uh, I think Joe was in the car, wasn't he? Charlie and Joe, Joe yeah. Esposito. Yeah. I mean, it's just um, it's like something you don't want to know at the time. You want to hear about it later, that because they're all okay. Yes, exactly. You know? Yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe they didn't want to talk about it because it was such a scary exactly. experience. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But he, you know, he loved to do uh, practical jokes on people. You've heard that too, haven't you? Yes, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> But he didn't like it on him. But I, I have a st- quick story to tell you about uh, mm, someone who I, he did a joke on me. We when 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 I when I flip him, it's it's on for what a, two minutes, a two seconds. But it takes you a while to rehearse it and rehearse it. He's a, he was a big man, and I'm not that big tall. And so we rehearsed. So this one time we were rehearsing it alone in the sound stage, and uh, I, I he said, flipped me. So I flipped him. And it looked like he had hit his head, you know, and he was like he was out. And I went, oh, my God, I've killed Elvis Presley. <laughs> I'm going to have to go into witness protection or something. I'm going to have to get out of here. And he, he let me stew for about, I don't know, seemed forever, but it was probably about a minute and a half. And then he opened his eyes. He's like, got you, my little speckled pup. And that's, he called me speckled pup in rehearsal, and they put it into the script, which is a, something I don't know if people knew. But anyway, so I thought, oh, i got to get him. i got to get him somehow. I don't know how got to get him back because he didn't like to be played back so um I, it was 19 i have to tell you this it was 1955 and uh i was 15 i just had my 80th oh my god and <laughs> uh i was 15 and my dad being in show business knew a lot of people so he went over to the movie giant you know the movie giant yes uh, james with dean taylor yeah. james dean rock hudson and so forth yeah. and he at warner brothers and we lived in hollywood and i he called me I call him my daddy because daddy was my dad was from Texas, so we say daddy. So my daddy says, "Hey, so someone wants to talk to you." And I went, "Okay." So I say hello, and the person on the other end say, "This is Cynthia." And I, you know, I never forget this. And I said, "Yes." He said, "This is James Dean." And I, 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 James Dean. And I, he said, "I, your daddy said it's your birthday. Is that right?" And I went, "Yes." He said, "Well, I'm just want to wish you happy birthday." And I said, "Well, thank you so much." And then he said, here's, here's your daddy. And then two weeks later, he was gone. Wow. And so I remember that story because it's like, I don't many people have had that happen. It was just a quick call, but at least I got to talk to him. You know, heard his voice. Yeah. <clears throat> so I thought, well, I'm, you know, Elvis loved James Dean. And, you know, he wanted to emulate him as an actor. So I thought, well, what, how can I get back at him? So I, at one point, I said, you know, we were just talking, chit-chatting. And I said, you know, when I was 15, da-da-da-da, and I said, uh, I got to talk to James Dean. He said, you did what? And I said, I got to talk to James Dean. He said, you did not. I said, yes, I did. So we went back and forth, like two kids, you know, squabbling. And I said, I did, I did. He says, well, what did, what did he sound like? He was like a kid, a big fan. He said, what did he sound like? I, want, I said, it didn't last but a minute, but I did get to talk to him. And he goes, oh, my gosh. And I said, so I got to do something, Elvis, you never did. <laughs> and he goes, oh, my God, you're right. You got me. It wasn't. As, as dramatic as the other one, yeah. what he did to me. Yeah. But I thought, well, I, at least I showed him that I did something that he could never do. And he said, oh, you got me there, kid. <laughs> and then he, we laughed and hugged. And it was just, it was amazing that, uh, that I, you know, I was allowed to uh, to, uh, to talk to this guy, uh, to, um, James Dean. And he was gone with yeah. his, you know, car crash. I, I think James Say Dean, again? he always sort of came across as a down-to-earth guy as well, James Dean. Did. Right, right. Um, you know, there was no airs and graces with James either, I don't think. Uh, right. He, he, you know, we, we'll never know now how it turned out, whether, you know, we, but at the time, you know, I always felt that watching his films and watching the very few interviews that, that there are of him, he just seemed kind uh-huh. of down to earth, a, a little bit like Elvis, you know, just down to earth. He did. Well, he, he was quite moody. He, he had some demons. I don't know if Elvis, he did maybe, but he had a lot of demons, you know, with his... Uh, I, what I've read and heard about him, and he was so famous at that time 
Of course, he did what three films, I think. That he did a lot of he did some TV work in live TV mm. um, in the early late fifties, early sixties, and uh, real early sixties. And uh, but he uh, he uh, he wanted to um, to to be like him as far as a, the, the serious actor. And Elvis had it in him. We think, I think, but it was never allowed to 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 come out. You know. There's always a controversy about that. There but, is, yeah. I mean, when you when you, you see know. when you see movies like Jailhouse Rock and especially King Creole, you know King for Creole, de- which is favorite. Yeah, mm-hmm. you definitely definitely can see that he had potential. He yeah. did, he did, and but they had a good thing going. I mean, as as silly as Kissing Cousins was, it wasn't you know it wasn't Tennessee Williams or Eugene O'Neill. It wasn't supposed to Shakespeare. It wasn't supposed to be. It may it was like the third top grossing film of the year. And all of his films were, and so I think that's what I've read as far as that goes. Then um, it just they didn't want to mess with it, you know. Yeah, it was yeah. a, it was a it was a winning combination. Well, uh, Hal Wallace said that there was only one sure thing uh, in Hollywood in the '60s, and that was an Elvis Presley movie. You know, it was sure <laughs> right. it, it, it was sure to make money. Okay, near the end, near the end of the sixties, they were starting to you know wane, but they did. They always made right. money. They always made money. They always made money, and now, you know, uh, people downgrade them sometimes. But no, he hated. I never saw that he hated making Kiss and Cousins. Maybe I'm sure he didn't. Wasn't real pleased with the content. I don't know, but he. I never saw that he had a good time. We all had a good time. I always say the star of any production sets the tone. Mm. If he's going to be crabby or she's going to be crabby or diva, it, it, it puts a cloud over it. But he was never like that. So whether he was happy with it or not, I don't know. But um, I think as time went on, yes, he, you know, let me do something else. Let me do something else. Mm. And um, I, people say, well, what do you think he'd be doing now? Well, who knows? But I, my own opinion is that I think he would be, if he did films, it would be like a Clint Eastwood, you know, the elder statesman. Yes. Or... Basically, I think just singing gospel. Mm, yeah. That's what I, I would picture him doing. Because he'd be, what, 85? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah. 85. So if, if, he, if, he, if he did anything at all in the entertainment business, you know, at that point, I think maybe I could see him doing like a Clint Eastwood, Gene Hackman type of thing, or just recording, or you know, gospel which he loved, as you know. Yes, I do, yeah. So after Kissing Cousins, uh, what happened? Oh, what happened? Well, um, you mean with him and stuff? Yeah, just okay. just just basically wanted, what happened after you finished up and well, so I forth. To, yeah, I did. People said, "Did you keep in touch?" I want to tell you this, and I said, "Well, I just kind of went on my way and uh, kept in touch by phone." In those days, obviously, it was by phone. And I lived in L.A., and he would do Vegas once in a while. And he said, "Come see me in Vegas," and I would say, "Okay, I will, honey." You know that kind of a thing. And I just kept putting it off because you know. Elvis is going to be there forever, and of course he wasn't. Mm. And so my the moral of that story is don't put off what you need to do or what you want to do now, because as we know, we're not promised tomorrow. I only wish that I had seen him in concert. Mm. I mean, he did sing to me in the film, and of course it was he did more than once, you know, takes and stuff, and I got to know him and everything. But I would love to have seen, actually, you know, in Vegas or someplace, and I never did, so... I don't believe in regrets. You know, they say you regret what, more what you didn't do in life than what you did. And I do regret not making an effort to do it. But I thought, well, I'll see him, you know. Mm. I'll see him sometime. Yeah. Go for yeah. it. Yeah. I know I agree with you. You should never really put off till tomorrow what you can do today. That's a saying, isn't it? Right. I have a really quick story about, uh, and then my son was born, so... Uh, I uh, married, and my son was born, and I have a real funny story that I've told to people, and it really caps it. It's it's the power of Elvis. My son, who is a grown man now, he's 55, but he's still my baby. Yeah. He's in Massachusetts in, in the States. and he, But he was in L.A., in the Valley, where they have the studios and stuff, and he would he would sit around the coffee house, and I was in Vegas, and this is uh, just a few years ago, not too long, and he would say, Mom, he called me up, he'd, Mom, I said, well, he's my only child. He said, uh, the guys and I was we were sitting around talking about uh, you and working with Elvis because my son was kind of private. We never talked about it. And I said, "Okay, yes." And he said, "Well, you know, you worked in with him in sixty in sixty you for something." And I'm, you know, he said, "And I, 
I have blue eyes and full. And I said, "Oh my God, I know where he's going." With this. <laughs> you get it, Steve? I yeah. do. Yeah. And yeah. I went. And the guy said, "You know, you ought to talk to your mom about this." And I said, "Oh my God!" So he calls. So he's telling me, and I said, "Oh." And he said, "So I want to ask you two questions." And I said, "Okay." His name is Michael. Okay, Michael, what is it? He said, "Well, uh, did you have a thing with Elvis? And uh, and am I his son?" And the first, and I said to him, Michael, the first question I want to answer, and the second one, no, you're not. And then he says to me with a pause, he goes, "Oh," he said, "That would have been great. That would have been wonderful. And besides, Dad wouldn't mind." <laughs> And I think, Dad, I think Dad would have mind, you know. And we yeah. ended it at that. Yeah. And I, he, since he lives in in, in a different state across the country, uh, he just got married not too long ago. And his wife said, "So is he a son?" I said, "No, no," <laughs> you know, joking. And I said, "No, I'm telling the truth." But he had blue eyes and full lips, and he doesn't look like me so much. So I'm thinking, no, no. But he he said, "I just want to ask you that." You know, he already had the back of his mind. Maybe I am his son. <laughs> And because the guy said, you got to ask your mom, you know, the timing is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I, that always gets a laugh because uh, who wouldn't, you know, you want to think that, that maybe you are, but then, yeah, you know, yeah. it's not ridiculous, great, I think. Great story. Great story. It's, uh, I, I've actually just thought of something. Did you, uh, yes. did, did Priscilla come to the, uh, to the set any, any days? No. Well, she was in uh, Miss Memphis. No, Memphis. I never met her. Okay. The colonel came a couple of times, but not too much. Hmm. What Not you, too much. He's what, had his guys around him, you know. What did you think of Colonel? Um, everybody... I have mixed emotions. Hmm. You know, I have mixed emotions. I, I think, this is my own opinion, I think uh, he did what he, he did, the, the best he did in the beginning. Maybe there wouldn't have been an Elvis Presley, so to speak, entertainer, if it weren't for him and what, and what he did for him in the beginning. But I think as time went on, you got to let the strings go a little bit and let him do other things. And, he, and it didn't happen. But Elvis was very loyal, as you know. These stories, everybody knows. Um, uh, so there's good, there's good and not so good. That's my feeling about it. Yeah, yeah. And some people to ask me, well, would, would you like to have been married to Elvis? I said, oh, no, 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 no. A girlfriend, maybe, but not a wife. Mm. I mean, you know, I wouldn't want my husband, you know, girls wanting him all the time and never, you know, all that kind of thing. I wouldn't want that at all. So I can understand. Uh, it's just a hard. It would have been a hard relationship, as far as I'm, con- you know, their concern, Priscilla and Elvis, to to make it last. I, that's my opinion. Yeah. I've met her, and she's been very gracious, very gracious to me. Uh, did you meet her recently? In fact, uh, uh, about three years ago. I, I mean, I don't hang out with her. I've never, you know, talked to her on the phone. But I have met a number of times. But actually, Priscilla, my son was, I think. He's about three years older than uh, Lisa Marie, and we used to—I used to take my son Michael at the park in Beverly Hills, called Beverly Park. It was a park then; now it's a mall, shopping mall. And and right after kissing cousin, then she and and when she they got married and everything, she would—they were out here, and she would bring Lisa Marie and Michael, and they would play. Mm-hmm. Now, I told Michael that you know years later, he says we did what? Because he doesn't remember that. He says, well, uh, why didn't you keep in touch? And I said, well. I didn't, you know. So I, when she was in Vegas quite a few, not too long ago, a few years ago, I, and, you know, I was introduced to her again, and I mentioned that, and she said she really believed, she remembered that. And I said, you do? She said, I remember going to that park. So and she described, you know, described where it was. So whether she was just being gracious or not, she said, yeah, I do remember. So when I see her, which isn't often at all, you give a hug, you know. Mm, mm. But I don't know her you know, as a, as a good friend. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's, you know, there's two sides to every story. There's his, hers in the middle. Yes. That's good. You know, to what, to, to some people have their opinion. I, um, uh, I'm neutral about it's their business, whatever happened. Uh, of course we all know that Lisa has had a very, very hard time recently with oh, uh, God, Benjamin. Yes. And there's actually a rumor yes. now that she, she could actually be moving back to Graceland uh, because really? uh, well, Benjamin was laid to rest, wasn't he, in the meditation garden there a few weeks ago? I think so. Yes, I heard that. Uh-huh. But it, it would be difficult for Lisa to move back to Graceland because of the tours. You know, it, it, they couldn't just stop the tours. I'm sure they couldn't do that. Um, so no, I don't think they would. So I, I had a couple of ideas on my live stream. I do a live stream to my uh, uh-huh. to, uh, on my YouTube channel, Elvis YouTube channel, every Sunday. And I thought maybe sh- they could build something behind the mansion for her to stay in, 
Or do you remember uh, uh, Vernon? Vernon Presley used to have a house, yeah, house. On, on Dolan. Uh, but the right. se- but the security could be quite difficult to keep that secure because it's right on the road. Whereas uh, as I we mean, as we know, Graceland is way way back from the boulevard. Exactly, and the other one is, but but it'd be like in a fishbowl, wouldn't it? Mm, exactly, exactly. And she's had enough and, of that, uh, I'm sure. But her mother's, yeah, and her mother, but her mother's in L.A., so would she want to be that far from her mom? Mm. And that's another thing. Priscilla, I think, has sold the house in L.A. I think recently. Oh, she has? I think so, yeah. You see, the thing is, there's so many rumors flying around, and you don't know what what's know. true and what's just rumor. But I, um, I, I could definitely see I Lisa moving nearer to Memphis, maybe Nashville, or even Nem- Memphis okay. itself, you know. It, yeah, even Nashville. Yeah, I understand that. Uh, I don't, I'm not on social media, so I don't do Facebook. I don't do any of that. Hmm. So I don't see, I do talk to my friend Marion, who was Elvis's nurse. She's like family to me, and she was his nurse the last three years, I think, and knew him obviously very, 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 very well, and she'll talk to Priscilla once in a while, and I've asked her how she, you know, she was doing, and of course, Lisa, everyone knows how devastated Lisa Marie was, and is. Mm, I yes. just can't imagine that. I just can't imagine that. She's had her problems, and uh, but I could see if she wants to be close. You know, she can't live in the house. I mean, like you said, they're not going to stop the tours because it's the money-making thing. Mm, so yeah. uh, what, what is she going to do? Right. She could be somewhere where they have gorgeous homes and, and just be in Memphis mm. to feel closer. Yeah. But um, I don't know. It's 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 sad. And uh, she's got those other, her other children. Yeah. Yeah. I just hope she I finds some peace, uh, you know, to, to have to she bury, can't. to have to bury one of your ch- children. It, it must be oh. unimaginable grief, oh. unimaginable grief. Uh, yeah. I can't imagine it. And it'd be so public too. Yeah. Yeah, everything, you know, everything with is scrutinized. Lisa and the Presley yeah. family, yeah, right, and 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 criticized, and that's why I stay off all that because I, you know, mm. I I don't need to hear all this stuff, and I so I'm usually late with rumors. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> you know, what's going on with that, which is probably good, you know. Yeah, it is. It's, I mean, it's, I do, it, it's not a bad thing sometimes because it just gets all of a mishmash, yeah. and you don't know what to believe, what's true, right. and what's what's made up. So it's no bad. Right, thing. I have a a yeah. fan fan page. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it. Have you seen it on um, Victor Hansen where it's a fan page? And and if something happens, like when good or bad, like when we had the shooting here in Vegas, I wrote a paragraph of how I felt. And when something good, though, or something bad, I'll write uh, to the fans, you know, yes. da 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 and, uh, and get responses back. But as far as, it's a Facebook, but as far as actually a Facebook or tweeting and all that i don't do all that mm. and i'm so see i'm so far behind that it would take me forever to learn to learn all that yeah, yeah and I, I i'm really not interested in all that i think too much you know grief gets it's displayed on on facebook and you know too many people are hurt yeah and yeah. like rumors like you said rumors yeah. and are rumors. they true or are they not true you know yes, that's right that's right. Um, speaking of which, uh, Elvis's death. How did you find out about, or how did you hear about Elvis's death? How did I hear about her? Yeah, I was with my ex-husband. I was in, and my son was twelve. We were in Hawaii, and uh, I mean, so I'm sorry, San Francisco, and we were with friends, and we were driving, and uh, he had the radio on. It was when those you know, news came on, and I said, "What was that?" You know, the friend who was driving a couple, and he put you know put the volume volume up, and I said, "Oh my God!" Well, I was in shock couple of days complete shock and then tears and nobody knew you know I, unless you were very 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 close to him you know in the house and mansion and very very close probably how ill he was mm. but uh you always know i knew when, when where i was when kennedy was shot when uh, martin luther king when robert kennedy and Challenger and Elvis, of course. Mm. You just know these things where you are, and they're in your mind forever. And um, I think it's—I it's, don't it's, know. He'll, you know, he's. Been, it's it's the reality. He's going to go on forever. Yeah, it's it's the reality that when you know when something like that happens, the thing the things you've just mentioned there, it's the reality that you know that it is just a, an earth shattering moment. It's a it's a it's a huge moment in 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 history. When some, some something like that happens, as you say, JFK, Elvis, you just know. That's why you remember where you are. And you remember what you, if you were talking to someone, what you said. It's like certain things that Elvis said to me I'll never forget. Certain things that, like the James Dean, I, it was verbatim. 
Mm. You know, I just remember. I mean, it was short, but these things that stick in your mind. But yeah, when Kennedy and I was a young, I was tw- uh, 23. Yeah, but I mean, I was young and it was like in America, it just changed everything. Mm. I think made us change, unfortunately, um, our innocence, you know, and it goes on and on. And the challenger and just different things. Mm. And, and what's to come? I don't know. I'd be glad. I don't know if your your listeners feel this way, but I'd be glad when 2020 is over. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. with yeah. everything, I mean, God, we're fortunate to be here and talking to you, and you, you're such a pleasure, but to it, just can't wait for this to be over and have another year of, of you know, yeah, I don't change. Think it, 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 change. It, it, it won't go down as anybody's favorite year, that's for sure. That's <laughs> no, for sure. no, for sure. For sure. So but, um, you you wrote a book, didn't you, called Pigtails, yes. Presley and Pepper. Presley and Pepper. Yeah. Uh, with my friend uh, Victor J. Hansen. Okay. And uh, he's in Canada. He's my dear friend. And uh, we wrote it over two years. We would do it by email, by call. They came, he and his wife came and stayed with us uh, a couple of times. And I just, the only reason, because it's, um, it's a show business book. It's not an Elvis book, per se. But I realized because too many people have written Elvis books, and it's their perspective, and that's fine. Elvis isn't here to to dispute anything. So, but it was my impression of him, and of course, he's. I found that the thread of Elvis thread is in the whole book. When I was twelve years old, I lived in Hollywood, off on Vine Street, which is a popular Hollywood and Vine. And a guy who sang, I saw Mommy kissing Santa Claus, the kid. He he's very famous here. He was he was a friend of mine, and he lived in the same apartment building. This child this man boy grew up and married Yvonne Craig okay it didn't last the marriage didn't last long but they were friendly and I thought well okay right there Yvonne at, when I was 12 years old well she was tw- they weren't 12 but that's the start of it everything you know was connected has been connected in my life almost with Elvis and um I dedicated it to my son to my parents and to Elvis my book and it's a memoir of show business, and people would say, why don't you write a book about Ginger Rogers, because I did meet her, and other people you met in your work, and Elvis, and, and so we did. We, t- we took our time, you know, we didn't have a deadline, and um, they say it's cathartic, and I guess it was. It was very interesting, and we we said, let's, you know, I said, I want to start at the beginning. That's really best, when I was in New York, and I did a, a Broadway show with Julie Harris, and I was four years old. I want to start so that I can remember what I can remember and go, it's easier, you know, than the, oh yeah, this happened here. And Victor is very good with technical stuff as far as getting dates and things. So he, there's a lot about my dad in it, about show business and vaudeville and his friendship with Hope and Crosby and Jackie Gleason, Milton Berle, all these old timers. I don't know if you know, you know, Bob Hope. Oh yeah. And Big Crosby. Yeah. But I don't know, you know, the other people. And, and then the things I've done and then the Elvis, of course, there's a big chapter of Elvis in there, and uh, and it's it's pretty much up to date. And um, uh, Debbie Reynolds was a friend, and well, there's a cute thing at the end with her, and just things that uh, I did. And I, if it's nothing else, it's a legacy to my son. It's not a kiss and tell. I mean, people can use their own imagination when that they want, um, but it's enough interest that people have said, "Gee, it's like you were talking to me," you know, and it was interesting, and that's what I wanted. So. If anybody's interested, it's on Amazon. I don't know That's how you right. do it, dot com. Yeah, yeah. I was looking at yeah. um, I was looking at Amazon the other day. It is, it is available. Yeah, and uh, it's got a lovely picture of you on the front. A very dreamy looking Cynthia. I must. Yeah, admit. that was when I was under contract at 20th Century Fox. Yeah. yeah, with my hair up. Yes. That's right. And then my pic- my picture as I am now is on is in the book. I think it's in the flap. I, you can't see it. You'd have to get the book. But yeah, yeah. and. Uh, the only thing is, is uh, you know, when I do the shows, when I have done the shows, I would bring them with me and then um, sign them. But there's no way for me to sign them. But if anybody wanted to to, do, to buy one, that would be great. And then uh, if down the road, you know, we happen to meet, obviously bring it and I'll sign it. But uh, there's pictures and uh, it's personal stuff. I call it the good and the bad, not too ugly. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. With family, because my family was very interesting. Yes. My family was very quirky with my mom and dad not... We're not. We weren't just regular family, we kind of quirky, and that makes it interesting. You know, there's nothing like show business family. I don't think we'd have guys come over drink. They would drink. Everybody would drinking, and and we'd have daddy would have old timers stay on the couch, and they come for dinner. And they'd stay for two weeks. I mean, pianos playing and boozes running all over the place, and it was just crazy. But it was. I wouldn't 
I didn't know anything else, you know, as far as show business. It wasn't like a, an, uh, it's just kind of interesting and quirky. That's what I call it. Yeah, so, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's a very, very good read. Like I say, anybody uh, listening now, they can get it on Amazon. It's called Pigtails, Presley and Pepper. Uh, a Hollywood Pigtails memoir. Pigtails because of Margie. Yeah. Pigtails, yes. A pigtails because I wore Mar- because I, Margie wore Pigtails, of course, Presley and then Pepper. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to put you on the spot now and I'm going to say, um, uh-huh. what's the abiding memory of Elvis Presley? Or is there anything you'd like to just say about Elvis before we close? Uh, I just want to say, I mean, people, I've, you know, that he's left the building, and I always tell people at the end of my talk when I'm talking to people, you know, on stage, as far as I'm concerned, Elvis has not left the building and never has. Elvis was a, a wonderful human being, flawed as anyone else, kind, generous to a fault, and I feel so honored to have been a part of his life, and he'll be a part of mine forever, and I feel that he's more popular now than he's ever been, and I think he'll continue with young people, old people. And uh, he loved his fans, and I'd say God bless the fans. And God, whoever listening, God bless you. Stay safe, and I always say God bless Elvis and you, Steve. You, you take care also, and I'd well, really enjoy talking to you. Thank you very much. I couldn't have put it better myself. I do really think he will go on thank for... You. A long, long, long time. Long after we're gone. <laughs> you know. Oh, absolutely. And, absolutely. Uh, and I, I often say... And I've enjoyed uh, talking with you. Thank you You've very much. You've done your homework. That's what I like. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure for me okay. as well. An absolute pleasure. And I'd just, just like to thank, thank you, you once again for, you know, giving me this interview. Thank you very, very much. And you right. and well, Steve, my namesake, Steve, I hope you stay yeah, I got safe. Yeah, Steve's in my life. Well, we'll keep in touch, Steve, okay? <laughs> yes, thank you very much. All right. Thank you. And God bless everybody. Thank you. God bless you. Goodbye. Bye. Mm. Thanks again to Cynthia for sharing her Elvis memories with us. You can contact me by email at ElvisTheUltimateFanChannel at gmail.com and on Facebook and Twitter at ElvisTheUltimateFanChannel. All my podcasts are available on all good podcast providers such as Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Google Podcasts, Stitcher and iHeartRadio to name just a few. Thanks for listening and I hope you'll join me next time for another episode from Elvis the Ultimate Fan Channel Podcast.